Hey everyone, it's Rock for Cash. Here we are to review uh, what's happened in week seven of the FNFL. Uh, and as we always do, we want to thank our musical director, Team Mazza, who um, very topically has chosen this song for this week. Uh, Scotty Doesn't Know, uh, in honor of our illustrious Prime Minister. Um, $50, mate, it's all it would have taken. You idiot, anyway. Let's get on to the round and see what actually happened. Um, in the first game, Rock for Cash was up against Moneymaker 7. Uh, Rock for Cash uh, got the chocolates here, 95 to 80. Um, it was pretty much over before today's game. Um, Barkley was needing about 28, 29. Um, only got 17, so, but. Didn't he, even uh, Mickety would have been uh, conceding this one well and truly before today. Uh, the cash beautifully led again by um, Kareem Hunt. 32 points, had three touchdowns. Tyreek Hill, 15 points. Chiefies are just on fire at the moment. Um, Moneymaker side, really it was just Barkley with 17. So at the moment that has rock for cash uh, in second spot with five wins, two losses, and the money makers have dropped down to 11th with two wins, five losses. In the next game, probably the upset of the season so far, those cocky uh, Browns went down to Archie's All Stars, 75 to 108. Boy, oh boy, that uh, Archie's All Stars, they're up and down like a bride's 90 this season. Um, they were led beautifully by Latavius Murray with 20, Thielen 17. Thielen, he's had seven games in a row now, over 100 receiving yards. He only needs one more um, to equal the record. Um, Wentz had 14, Ertz had 13. On the Brown side, Cam Newton, what a win by the Panthers. 17 points down, three quarter time to win the game, 21-17. He scored 23, um, Chubb. Everyone had a Chubb over this bloke before this round started. He had 14, and uh, Funchess had 12. So, yeah, this was a massive, massive upset. I don't think anyone tipped uh, Archie's All-Stars to win this one. Um, so well done to the Father Cull. He's trained, uh, trained him up beautifully for this one. Uh, in the next game, Team Mazza travelled to Little Waiter Stadium. Uh, Team Mazza got the chocolates in this one, 77 to 64. Uh, just before I go on, the Browns are still on top of the ladder with five wins, two losses. And Archie's have moved up to fifth spot now with four wins, three losses. Back on the other game, Team Mazza up against Little Waiters. Uh, came down to today. Julio Jones needed a big one, probably needed a score, probably about 20, 22 to, uh, to get them over the line. He only got eight. Uh, so yeah, 64 to 77. Um, Team Mazza led by uh, Brown, who had 19, the Vikings 15, and Drew Brees 15, who um, incidentally Added a couple more records to his CV this week. He threw his 500th um, touchdown pass. And he also became the third player to um, win against all 32 teams. All 32 teams, you say, Rock? He plays for the Saints. How could he defeat the Saints if he plays for the Saints? Well, Rock did a little bit of investigation on Drew Brees. And did you know that he played for the San Diego Chargers from 2001 to 2005 before he went to the Saints. And it turns out that he almost signed with the Dolphins, but the Dolphins medical staff said that his shoulder was dodgy and not to sign him. So great work, Dolphins. Great work. Um, little waiters, Brock Osweiler, the trade from the cash. He top scored for them with 13.76. Hopkins had 11 and Panthers had 10. 
So good, good win by Mazza. He's uh, picked up a little bit of um, momentum in the last few weeks. He's uh, in sixth spot now, four wins, three losses. Danielle, who was sitting up in second spot, massive tumble this week. I think she dropped four spots to seventh with four wins and three losses. In the next game, boy, here's another upset. This one is massive. Mitch's Mungles getting over the top of the, the team that we don't want to talk about. The Kelpies, 151 to 75, 76 point win. Rock hasn't done his uh, homework here, but I'd say that's very close to Mitch's Mungle's highest ever, uh, greatest winning margin over anyone. Um, amazing, really. Uh, no one, no one was on the Mungles in this one. You could have written your own ticket, but you know the Mahomes train just keeps on going. They got 30. The Colts got 20, Sanders got 21, Beckham got 20, um, Coleman got 14, Kittle got 15. His worst score was his kicker with eight. Uh, the Kelpies, not even a yelp. Luck had 22, Thomas 12, Grant 12, but that's about it. The cash, the cash makes a lot of uh, predictions, um, as you've seen in the previous cash. Um, episodes, but as far as he's concerned, that's it. The Kelpies, our reigning Premier for the last two years, they're finished. They will not win the Duty Bowl this year with the way that they're playing at the moment. It is shitful. Dave, come on to Cash TV. Tell me how you're going to win the Duty Bowl. Tell me why your team is worth even talking about on a weekly basis, because basically... You could be playing in the Sacco this year, champ. Darren's actually uh, gone above the Kelpies now on the ladder. They're in eighth spot, three wins, four losses. And the Kelpies are also three wins, four losses in ninth spot. But as far as the cash is concerned, Kelpies are gone. G-O-N, gone. In the next game, uh, again, in the Nick Cup, Young Remix Killers versus Shiva Kamini. It was the Killers winning 125 to 70. Again, this one was pretty much over nearly the start of Monday. Um, Young Remix Killers led beautifully by um, Mac, 29.9. Cav, I'd be trading him. He will never do that again. The cash called in on Isaiah Crowell a few weeks ago. The guy hasn't gone near the ball since. This bloke's going to do the same. I'd be trading him for as much currency as you can actually get. Um, Lindsay, 21, our Thursday night beast. Drake, who the Cavs seems to like, 14. Fairburn is kicker, 10. Matt Ryan, 16. Uh, Shiva Kamini, Tommy Brady is consistent as ever, 20 points. Uh, Dion Lewis, 15. No one else in the double figures. Um, yeah, just a training drill really for Cav. Just a lesson for Shiva. Um, so that moves Cav up to fourth spot, four, three in the win loss. And Shiva still holding up the rest of the league in the bottom two and five. Uh, in the final game, our closest game of the round, uh, Smooth Criminal were up against Little River Giants. Uh, the criminal got over the top of the Giants here, 98 to 93. Um, it came down to today, uh, I think, Shepard and Ingram were needing to score probably about 22, 23 to get them over the line. Together they scored 18, so the, um, the smooth criminal just hung on here. Good win by her, uh, winning the Taco Bell as well this week. She's very excited that she actually got a trophy. Uh, she loves a good trophy, the old uh, Smooth Criminal. Uh, so she's now moving herself up to third spot, uh, putting herself right in contention with wins in the last two weeks. She's on four and three. And um, Little River Giants have dropped to 10th spot with uh, two wins and five losses. So just as a recap, the ladder at the moment has the Browns and the Cash both on five wins, two losses. The difference between the two of them um, 
a lad has worked on points for uh, is 5.98 points uh, that the Browns are um, in front of the cash. So that's less than a, a point a game that the Browns are ahead. So really all those people that are going on about how great the Browns are, you might want to start putting the cash into those conversations. Uh, third place on four and three is Smooth Criminal, followed by Young Ring Killers, four and three, Archie's All-Stars, four and three, Team Mazza, four and three, Little Waiters, four and three. Uh, in eighth spot, Mitch's Mungles, three and four, the Kelpies, three and four. And rounding it off, Little River Giants, two and five, Money Makers, two and five, and Shiva Kamini, uh, two and five as well. Um, just a few other things that the cash wanted to uh, talk about. Um, first one is that uh, just be aware that there is an absolute monster of a trade um, in the making. Um, the cash obviously involved in this one. Um, it is going to rock the FNFL. All I can say is that the cash is at the moment trading out Kareem Hunt and Tyreek Hill out of his team. Um, the coach that's involved in this is very, very excited. We're just going to have to nail uh, and iron out a few things. Uh, so stay tuned for that one. It's going to be a massive trade when it goes through. Um, the cash looks like he'll uh, looks like he's going to be losing on this one, but he'll be miles in front on this trade once it goes through. Um, so yeah, try and work out who the players the cash is getting because he's very excited. Uh, we just got, like I said, iron out a few things. Um, uh, in the other other news, um, actually going to turn Scotty off for a minute because I want you guys to pay attention to what I'm about to say. Um, basically, the the commissioner met today and it's been approved uh, for a couple of rule changes that are going to come into effect next season. Uh, the first rule change will be that uh, no longer will there be um, names being drawn from a hat in relation to the draft order. Um, whoever finishes last in the league will have the first pick in the 2019, um, the 2019 draft. Uh, if you win the duty bowl, you will have pick 12. Uh, just ironing out a few things on this one as well. Uh, we think that uh, possibility that you'll be able to trade uh, picks uh, along the way um, during the draft. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the first uh, major announcement. Um, you're probably thinking how much bigger can this get? This next one that uh, the commission has also um, almost approved as well. Well, pretty much approved, just gonna iron out a few things as well. Uh, the league next season will adopt a form of uh, keeper um, system where uh, the team that you have in the bowl round uh, of those 15 players, you will nominate three players from your team and they will carry over to your team for next season, uh, which means that the draft itself will uh, start in round four uh, and you'll just be drafting 12 players um, in relation to this, that if you bring those three players over, they cannot be um, drafted by you any form uh, during the draft the following season. So if, for example, you have Le'Veon Bell this year, you decide to carry him over to the following year, at the end of that year, you cannot name Le'Veon Bell as a player, a franchise player of yours. Uh, even if you had pick one in the 2020 draft, you cannot pick up Le'Veon Bell. So just things to shake up the league a little bit. Uh, hopefully these are well received. Like I said, uh, both of them just need a little bit of ironing out, but they're pretty much... Um, lay down as is that these rules will be coming in next year. So hopefully you're as excited as the commission is, uh, always looking to try and improve things in the league and um, make it a much uh, better league each year. So, yeah, like I said, there'll be a, um, 
uh, a change in the drafting, in the draft order, um, and also there'll also be, we're not whether to call it a keeper system or a franchise system, I kind of like franchise system, um, but yeah, it'll be three players that'll carry over to the 2019 um, team. So think long and hard who you're going to uh, now keep in your team uh, because you'll have the possibility of carrying over those three uh, players into 2019. Anyway, that's a lot to digest. Um, looking forward to everyone's comments in relation to these things. Um, like I said, uh, the Rock is the people's champ. Uh, he tries to make it fair and reasonable and equitable to all peoples. Um, so this is just one way that um, we can uh, try and make this league a little bit more uh, exciting and successful. So with that, have a good, uh, great couple of uh, days, guys. Uh, Rock will be back on Thursday to preview week eight, uh, the start of our second half of the season before the finals. So, yeah, so we've already gone through half a season already. It's just flown by and... Um, yeah, let's just see what the next seven weeks bring before the actual final start. So with that, the cash is out.